Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the City Council meeting of uh, March 20, March 16, 2015. If you stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to approve the agenda. All in favor? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes of our previous meeting on March 2nd. I will move for approval of the minutes as presented. I'll second. I move and second to approve the uh, minutes uh, as presented to us. Uh, all in favor? Yes. yes. And then uh, approval of the accounts payable. Uh, item number four is also on our packet for our review. I move that we approve the accounts payable as presented. I have a second. I move and second to approve the accounts payable and for this roll call, please. Councilmember Althoff? Yes. Councilmember Ellison? Yes. Councilmember Hall? Yes. Councilmember Mayor? Yes. And Mayor Hedges? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Moving on to item five, citizen comments for any items that do not appear on the agenda. So if any citizen would like to address the council, this would be the time to do that. We could ask that you state your name and keep your comments to five minutes. Hi, my name is oh. Laura Brower. Step up. We oh. need to have you uh, borrow with the microphone that way. Okay. Get, get on the tape. All right. Um, I am here on behalf of my parents that live at 310 Lincoln Lake. They are sitting next to that burnt house going on a year. And i just like to know what the city plans on doing about the situation of the demolition. You've talked to the city manager, Mark Howell? I have. Okay. He's, he's the way to go. Uh, we're aware of the situation, but uh, uh, you, this is time more for comments, so uh, we're, we're aware of your concern. Okay. This is not. Can you follow up? I, Steve, can we cover a little bit? He's been doing some of these work. We received some information over the weekend that Bank of America has been paid by the insurance company, and we just don't know why they're not taking the house down. Uh, according to the assessor, there has not been a bankruptcy on that property. So it's kind of in limbo until Bank of America makes a decision. And I did put a call into Bank of America today asking what the holdup is, and I've not received anything back yet. Okay. Unfortunately, there are legal channels that must be followed, and we are pursuing it. Well, my parents have hired an attorney, so now you're aware of that. Yes. Thank you. Any other citizen wish to address the council tonight? Seeing none, then we'll move on to old business, uh, strategic uh, goals, as well as pending council reports. Yes, a couple of things for you. Um, on strategic goals under info and infiltration, uh, the full monitors that you approved, um, my understanding is that they've been installed. Uh, but one of the things that we're looking at is doing some cleaning of some of the lines leading up to the flow meters. And Dan's been working um, toward the end of last week and maybe even this week to uh, try to get some prices on that. And so we can maybe get those lines cleaned um, sooner uh, so that we get good data from the flow meters. Um, one of the things that we may do, if it's okay with the council, is um, for your workshop on Monday, maybe schedule a special meeting for that item because it will be over $10,000. Um, so maybe as part of your workshop, just schedule a special meeting for that single item only uh, so we can get that moving. Otherwise, we're going to be waiting three weeks, and uh, that's 
just too long to wait uh, to try to get good data. So right, those lines are clean. So if that's okay, we can hear that. Can to go uh, ahead and add that to the meeting agenda? Are you in favor that? Makes sense. So you'd have a special meeting first for action items and then recess there, put your hand and go to your motion. All right. And that's at 6 o'clock. That's sure. at 6 o'clock on Monday. All right. Um, and then, and I'll keep you posted on that. That depends on, on what we pull it together this week. Um, then the downtown development plan, just updating that item that the final report was presented to the downtown development for me. And then um, lime disposal. I have following your, um, uh, I'm on pending council projects now. Um, following your last meeting, I put together a memo uh, based on your request on the financials. And then there was an update that I needed to make to that, and I was not able to get that out last week, but um, I, I can get the financials to you uh, um, quite soon here. But the memo's drafted, and I think we show you the draft if you want to see it. Okay. And that's all right? All right. Any questions or concerns regarding those subjects? So now then we'll move on to item seven, new business. and. Uh, we have the 2015-2016 Comprehensive Tree Plan. And uh, yes, the Arbor Board um, has uh, met. They put together a Comprehensive Tree Plan. The uh, chair of the Arbor Board is here to, uh, to talk with you about that. Okay. Top of the evening to you. Hi. <laughs> like some of you wore green, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, um, about uh, February 5, 2007, I came to the City Council and uh, offered to start a study committee to uh, investigate and look into the establishment of maintaining trees and stuff on public right away, and time flies as you're having fun. Uh, we are a Tree City USA, and just to review, we need four things to be a Tree City USA from the National Arbor Day Foundation. One of them is to establish an arbor board, which we have. Uh, we have a community tree ordinance, is the second thing. The third thing is we have to have a budget of, uh, of at least $2 per capita. And the fourth thing is we have to have a uh, Arbor Day observance. And uh, the planned Arbor Day observance will be this April 24th, uh, Friday. And um, uh, Lowell Family Chiropractic, uh, run by Jim Chichester, Dr. Jim Chichester, and Dr. Maria Chichester. Uh, um, accepted the uh, Arbor Board uh, planning of a tree there on that day. So we try to do a business if we can um, to uh, help them, you know, their investment in the town and uh, we appreciate their business and stuff. Um, currently our board consists of uh, Tammy Spicer, Diane LaWare, Melissa Spino, Sharon Ellison serves, comes to the meetings, and myself. Um, and I'd really like to uh, uh, you, you have a copy of the tree plan, and to date, the Arbor Board has authorized the installation of approximately um, 500, 501 um, trees, along with uh, 200 uh, pine seedlings, so about 701 trees throughout the community. Our tree selection and tree plan has been accomplished through the use of uh, selected contractors under the direct supervision of the Department of Public Works. Um, this is uh, all these plannings have been done with a financial participation from the City of Lowell um, through the Lowell Light and Power, the LCTV Fund, and the Look Fund, and the very generous support of the Lowell Area Community Fund. It will be our intent to continue to utilize these funds from these various community sources on at least an annual basis. Okay? Um, you have a, you know, a synopsis of what our uh, plans are for the upcoming uh, year. Um, uh, some of the highlights uh, we just completed would be like the Riverwalk extension you know, over by the amphitheater. We helped to fund some of the trees over there. Uh, the Bulls Road project, uh, Ridgeview and Sibley. Um, the Weiss Golf Cabin, we helped to uh, put some trees in there and dress that up a little bit too. Um, the, um, the tree plant has divided up into zones and um, the other thing we're shooting for for 2015 is uh, uh, biodigester lighthouse pipeline to address that up with some trees. And um, it's been suggested that the Arbor Board take over some of the responsibilities of the DDA so that they can concentrate on development. You know, a good example is that is the amphitheater, you know, we provided some trees for that. Um, and um, plenty of efforts with uh, coordinate with a garden club so we don't duplicate a lot of, you know, services. 
Um, and a projected budget for the upcoming year is about ten thousand dollars, and um, we'll be we'll need about ten thousand to carry out our um, projects that we have planned. Um, and lastly, I'd like to really thank uh, Dean Dester. He's been to our been to our meetings um, that, that are at noon hour, and um, uh, I just would like I know he's not here, but I just really like to you know acknowledge his presence at all those meetings and all the work that he did and has done uh, of all the things that uh, you know just myself I think of that he can deal with during the course of a, a week and a month and a year to uh, to come to our meetings and uh, he's been very uh, very extremely helpful so I just like to acknowledge Dan's help in that and um, you know the whole public works I don't know all of the some of the things he uh, delegates out but uh, from putting the water bags on you know when, uh, when we planted some trees that uh, we have a real hot summer uh, we need to lose that investment so we invested in some water bags that are reusable too so um city council have any questions for me at all just my annual report and uh, again i'd like to thank you know, all of you for all the work that you do i don't have to come to the city council meetings too often so i just like to thank all the time that you guys put on it and um, in your position at different boards and uh, uh, all the hours that you guys put in um, you're not compensated enough so i appreciate all you do for the city Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. One thing I would suggest we um, submitted by the Arbor Board, and they have Jim Regan as secretary. He's the chairperson. Just change that. I think that's his. <laughs> Thank you. With that, I move that uh, we adopt the 2015-16 comprehensive tree plan as presented by the Arbor Board. Now, I'll second. I moved and seconded. <coughs> Adopt the comprehensive tree plan and we can have a roll call, please. Councilmember Alta? Yes. Councilmember Ellison? Yes. Councilmember Hall? Yes. Councilmember Mayor? Yes. And Mayor Hodges? Yes. Thank you. Item B is uh, fund balance policy. This is a uh, policy we talked about at the uh, um, workshop, I believe. And uh, basically, uh, GASB or the Governmental uh, Accounting Standards Board uh, requires under Statement 54 that uh, we establish five components of fund balance. And uh, this is not something that we've done in policy uh, before, um, but uh, it's being presented to you now to uh, for your consideration. And uh, these five components of fund balance um, basically go from very restrictive to non restrictive. And um, and they're, they're listed in the policy as non-spendable fund balance, restricted, committed, assigned, and then unassigned fund balance. But the real meat of the policy is item D, and, and the very last item. And uh, as we establish these, these five components, we talk about that unassigned fund balance, and um, what uh, rating agencies like to see is they, they like to see that, that um, you have a lot of liquid cash available, um, so that when you're going out for a bond, um, if, if you have a you know, certain amount of cash available, then that um, helps uh, um, bondholders feel better about the fact that you have the not only capacity to pay the bonds, but if something um, something bad happens financially, then you've got some capacity to be able to make those bond payments as well. You have the cash to back it up. Um, under item D, we would be establishing, or you would be establishing a policy that uh, says the unassigned fund balance in the in the general fund that I would have to create a budget and I would have to manage funds so that uh, we would have greater of five hundred thousand dollars or fifteen percent. Uh, the standard we talked about this several times. The standard is anywhere from twelve to fifteen to eighteen to twenty to. You know, it depends on, on who you ask, really, but um, 15 seems to be about that middle of the road standard that the most uh, folks look for. The 500,000 was a clue that we actually got in our um, most recent bond rating, because um, they uh, rated us, they increased us from A to A plus, um, but they also um, mentioned that uh, we might, they might give further consideration to another bump in the rating if we had established a fund balance policy and, and gave us a clue to that, that half million dollars. So that's why that number's in there. Um, right now we're over a half million dollars. Um, I anticipate, you know, I'm, I'm about 70 to 80% through the budget work right now on, on the general fund. Um, I 
anticipate that we're going to be able to meet that again next year. And, uh, and I think we'll be able to, to continue to meet that for at least for the short term. And if we can't meet it, then that's when we come back and have a discussion. And that creates greater transparency in, in, uh, in how we manage funds. So that's pretty much it. That's the fund balance policy. And it's presented for your consideration. Council comments or concerns? that we adopt the fund balance balance policy as presented. I will second. We have moved and second to adopt the fund balance fund the balance policy. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and so if we could have a roll call. Councilmember Alto? Yes. Councilmember Ellison? Yes. Councilmember Hall? Yes. Councilmember Mayor? Yes. And Mayor Hodges? Yes. Thank you. Item C, the United Water Agreement. Um, at your previous meeting, you authorized the city manager to negotiate a successor agreement with United Wire. Um, that agreement is presented for your review. Um, much of the heavy lifting was actually done by the city attorney. Um, there was uh, quite a bit of legal language that, that was cleaned up, uh, identification, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the term of the uh, recommended agreement would be five years. Uh, the rate paid to United Water would be frozen in the first year uh, at the current level, and then uh, future increases would be based on uh, through price index, which is how the current contract is written. Um, the other thing that is eliminated from this um, uh, agreement is the, I'm going off the top of my head, the 22000 that uh, was a repayment to United Water when we had renewed the agreement with them the last time. Um, they uh, fronted the money on some infrastructure improvements and basically gave us a loan that we repaid over the course of that tenure period. And so that 22000 is, is now eliminated from, from our uh, annual expense. Um, those are pretty much the, the highlights of the new agreement and uh, it's being presented for your consideration today. Thank you. Uh, council comments? Concerns. What is the the consumer price index? What is that? The average increase been in the last few years? You know, I I, I haven't looked it up in the last few years. Um, so my my history is going to go back to when I was at the county and we were doing airport leases, and uh, um, and it seemed like CPI was always about two point two percent. Um, where that average was around 2.2 percent, but over the last few years, I'm not sure what it has been. One more question: the first, uh, the last contract was 10 years. This is five years. Yes. And that's all that we were able to negotiate was just the five years, or you thought that was best at this time? I, I think five years is is best actually. Okay. Um, I, you know, we didn't really have much of a discussion about 10 years as <coughs> we could have, um, but uh, that's that's a pretty long period of time, and, and five years really is, is, is on me, I mean, and I, I felt more comfortable with a five-year agreement. Thank you. All right, anything else? Okay, I will move that we adopt resolution 6-15. I'll second that. So I move and second it to adopt this resolution uh, with United Water. And after this, a roll call, please. Councilmember Althoff? No. Councilmember Allison? Yes. Councilmember Hall? Yes. Councilmember Mayer? Yes. And Mayor Hodges? Yes. Thank you. Moving on then to uh, item number eight, monthly reports. They're in our packet for review. Any questions or concerns with various departments and their reports? Seeing none, then we'll move on to council comments. And uh, Mr. Mayor, you're up. Uh, the fire authority has not met uh, in the next month. Hopefully, we'll have one next month. We'll do something so well. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see, Mr. Alton. 
Um, we had an airport meeting last week, and it was a pretty good meeting. Um, we had a lot, of, a lot of plans going on for cleaning up, and, and uh, we are actually going to start contracting homeowners and, and trimming some of the trees that that need to be trimmed and try to do that in-house with the board. <laughs> um, there's not that many of them and it'll help with the, you know, in our, in our goal of reaching general utility. And uh, there's quite a bit of stuff that needs to be done out there. And they're squeezing pennies because there's only so much income. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Oh, and I have nothing to report from Planning Commission. Lara, um, we will be operating a booth at the Community Expo, and uh, I think that's the 28th. Mm -hmm. We'll be there with our presentations. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. You heard the updates on the Arbor Board. I'd just like to thank everyone who serves on that board. Good group of people doing good work. Other than that, I have no other comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, Light and Power met last week, and uh, there's an upcoming Lineman's Ro Line Workers Rodeo coming up in Sacramento, California. The Low Light and Power has participated in this uh, Line Workers Rodeo in previous years, and uh, we have a representative going out to uh, show everybody what we can do and compete with uh, all of the other line people uh, across the United States. It's a terrific conference, and. Uh, uh, not always in Sacramento, California, but uh, colder places other times. But uh, uh, Tom Russo and Greg Pierce uh, will be making a presentation uh, at that meeting uh, uh, for the uh, distributive uh, generation sessions. And uh, uh, things are uh, looking, well, they're looking forward to uh, attending and participating in that conference and again putting all on, on the map. The biodigester continues to move closer to full operation. Greg Northrup was at the meeting to give a detailed update, and it was quite detailed. Uh, it took a long time, but uh, anyway, two we we're about two weeks behind uh, the desired completion uh, deadline, but uh, sometime in uh, April or May, there will be a ribbon cutting ceremony and a public open house for the biodigester. So we're looking forward to, to that. Uh, they continue to uh, review various policies and uh, procedures uh, at Light and Power and uh, adopted the engineering and operating policies. Uh, next month they'll begin work on the personnel policy handbook. Uh, and there's a draft uh, uh, operating budget that was uh, passed to be submitted to the Lowell City Council or to the city manager as required by our charter, so that's that's been done. And then. Uh, Sharon at the Light and Power uh, had an update on the 2014 Energy Optimization Program and the outlook for 2015, uh, complete with a detailed graph for Andrew Shrubman. <laughs> Who loves detail? And uh, next month's meeting uh, will be uh, postponed one week and uh, we'll meet on Thursday, April 16th. So things are going well with Low Light and Power. Pretty busy month. And, uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, met last week also. Uh, a great deal of their conversation uh, uh, had to do with uh, a community currency uh, presentation. Uh, uh, we used to know it as uh, Lowell Bucks and uh, uh, how uh, to keep business in, in Lowell. Seventy percent of local money stays within the community. Uh, there was a presentation made by Matt Leppert of uh, uh, Proto Company that uh, will help uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, institute a new policy and uh, program over the next five years. So that will be rolled out in about six months. And uh, he brought uh, some interesting information for all of us in that uh, his studies show that uh, in, within the 49331 zip code, payroll is uh, at $84 million. Seems incredible, but I, I once heard somebody say, Move to Lowell to uh, hide your money and pretend that you're poor. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it will go other places for for, for other reasons. But uh, there's a lot of employer recognition that would be involved with that. Uh, that's why he had that particular uh, piece of information uh, and uh, uh, motivating employees.
employees to, to do things, <coughs> and gift cards and those kinds of things, as well as uh, customer bonuses and recognitions of, of, of that sort. Again, the expo is on uh, March 28th, and uh, then there's the uh, long list of, uh, and we'll do that next meeting, of the various businesses that are receiving awards at the annual banquet coming up in May. So, a uh, very busy time with the Chamber of Commerce last week also. Tell them what we'll meet uh, initially on April 24th and then make distributions in, in May. So, looking forward to uh, that, that uh, rollout of uh, various dollars that might be coming out to uh, various nonprofits and other organizations. Uh, Rotary Auction will be Friday, April 17th. And uh, Life Fest uh, happened in Lowell a week ago, and uh, I'm still getting over a, a quite a little bit of a cold. I was to have emceed the ordeal, or the event, and, uh, uh, but instead I called upon our very capable Mayor Pro Tem, Sharon Ellison, and I really want to thank you for filling in at the very last minute. I thought I could pull it off. My wife said, no, you can't. It was <laughs> an honor. Sharon uh, filled in, so thank you very much for representing our, our community. You're welcome. Really appreciate that. It's great. And that's pretty much all that I have. Mr. Howe, a manager's report. Thank you. Just a couple of things. Um, we unscrew the bulbs on every other light downtown, and, and we are looking for public input. Um, this is an idea that, um, not unscrewing the light bulbs, but removing other, every other light was an idea that came out of the stakeholder meetings that was part of the downtown placemaking plan. And um, so that, that idea is incorporated into that plan. And um, here uh, we, we um, thought that maybe unscrewing the, every other light bulb would give people an idea of what that might look like. And, and actually it came up at a, at a work session um, that the council was having. And I think council member uh, Altoff brought that up as an idea to just try it out and, and let's let us, uh, people see what it looks like and maybe give us some input. So we're seeking input on that. And um, we'll gather those comments and bring it back to the council and screw them back in and, and then uh, figure out which way we're going to go. Um, the Downtown Development Authority approved the <coughs> to assist with the Avery Street project. So uh, we have the funding lined up for that project and we plan on moving forward with the uh, um, design work and, uh, and um, look forward to completing it. And then, as I mentioned before, we have a workshop scheduled for Monday, uh, March 23 at 6 o'clock at City Hall. Um, it's going to be primarily on budget, uh, but the other thing that I want to mention to the council is that the, the group that I've been reporting to you um, has been working on the concept called Fiber to Connect, which is um, what I call think snap fitness, but for business or for people who just want to rent or use office space. Um, they've been looking at the old cable building as a, a potential um, spot for that, and uh, they wanted to come and just uh, have a discussion with the council, um, sort of present the idea, and we thought a workshop would be a, a good place to do that. And um, so they'll be there for maybe the first 15 minutes to half an hour of your workshop, and then we'll move right into budget stuff. And anything else um, that you want me to cover? So that's all I have for you. All right, thank you. Uh, vacancies, we still have uh, two remaining vacancies as a uh, alternate uh, representative to the Board of Review as well as a opening on the Construction Board of Appeals. So if you'd like to serve our community, those are two opportunities waiting for a couple of people. So with that. I move we go into closed session to discuss pending litigation with the City Attorney. Oh, second. I moved and seconded to go on to closed session. And this will help please. Councilmember Althoff? Yes. Councilmember Ellison? Yes. Councilmember Hall? Yes. Councilmember Mayor? Yes. And Mayor Hatches? Yes. Thank you.